analyzing inspiring work, especially when it's made in the tool that you're trying to master is one of the best ways to grow as a designer. So today I'm going to show you five super inspiring websites and point out specific things about each of them that should help you grow as a web designer. First up is this portfolio website by Wildy Riftian. Right off the bat, you got this 3D design with all of these disciplines as a separate keychain. So you got motion, branding, editorial, photo works, and illustration. So at a glance, you already know that the challenge that this guy is facing is that he does a wide range of different types of work and he needs to show that in a way that's memorable and easy to understand. Now, all of this work is digital, so he's anchoring it in a physical object to help make it easier for the viewer to understand all of the information that he's trying to communicate here. So if you click on one of these keychains, it'll bring you to a page that has filtered out all of his work to show you only the projects that live within that discipline. So in this case, it's editorial. And then again, anchoring this category of his work with a physical item, which in this case is the keychain, but also we see a second one, which is this folder shape, right? If we go back to his works page, we'll see that he's using another physical metaphor to simplify the huge amount of projects that he wants to showcase here. So if you hover on any of these folders, you actually get to see a preview of the contents, just like if you were flipping through manila folders in real life, you'd be able to glance quickly at what's going to be inside before you actually fully open it up. And then when you click on it, it opens it up for you. And then of course, just like a typical portfolio, it's pretty straightforward at this point, you can click on it and it'll show you a range of beautiful visuals with the story behind each of the projects. And then again, on the about page, you've got more physical items to organize a lot of different information. So we've got contact information, bio on one sheet of paper, and then you've got skills on another piece of paper with softwares, languages, and so on. And then we've got experiences here, which has another hover interaction to help make things more engaging and make it easier to digest visually all of the information here, which can be overwhelming without any of these interactions in place. And another thing, when you find inspiration, you don't want to just look at the desktop site. You want to look at the mobile version of the website as well to see what they prioritize in transferring over from the desktop version to the mobile version. In this case, you can actually see that the interaction where you hover and you can drag these keychains around is missing in the mobile version version. But you've got the same design here, which actually does work even better in a vertical, a portrait orientation than it does in a horizontal. Now, if you scroll down, now, if you scroll down to this section, you'll notice that on mobile, it doesn't actually flip over like it does on desktop. It actually is just one card here. Now, the reason these differences are important is that it teaches you what are the things that are most important to transfer over to mobile and how is the web designer prioritizing what is important to keep and what isn't. But overall, this is definitely one of the top five portfolio sites I've ever seen, and it's built all in Framer. The second site is another portfolio site, but this one's interesting because its positioning is designed that's crazy good. Now, if you think about it, every designer naturally wants to say that the thing that makes them unique is that their designs are better than everyone else's. But usually that's not a strong enough argument because everybody's going to be saying that. But in this case, the design style is actually the differentiator. The niche is clearly startups, and in that world, you don't see illustrations and vibrant colors and animations and interactions like this very often. You really can't think of an app actually that does have a look like this. So Nick, the creator of this website, even though his service, his business model is not that unique. I mean, he's got either a one-off website or a monthly retainer, which is pretty standard in the industry. He actually successfully still stands out just because of the design language that he uses these illustrations, gradients, and these playful animations. So not only does he say with his copy that his design is crazy good, but he actually proves it with the design of the website being completely unique. And by the way, all these illustrations and layouts are actually just as impactful, if not more, on mobile. Overall, a really beautiful way to solve a problem that every freelance creative has to face, which is how do you stand out? Now, number three is not a portfolio site. It's meetstream.ai, which is a SaaS product. Best way for me to explain what it is is literally what it says right here, unified API and infrastructure platform for AI meeting bots. If that doesn't make sense to you, one, you're probably not the target audience. But second, it shows the challenge that this website has to solve, which is this is a very difficult product to explain visually because it's a purely digital product and it's not a product for the end consumer. So you can't just show a bunch of UI windows. So the approach that they've taken is similar to what Wildy Riftian did, which is the more complex 
complex and more abstract, more digital the idea is, the more you want to ground it in a physical object. You want to make it as simple and easy to understand as possible. And there's nothing simpler and easier to understand than objects in the physical world. So here you've got a bunch of tiles and each of them represent a different meeting platform. You got Google Meet, Teams, Slack. So you're already seeing from this physical interaction that you're going to get all these different meeting apps in one place. And if you keep scrolling down, you've got more visualizations of this. You got all of these different apps coming together into the meet stream API. The idea is communicating everything as visually as you possibly can. You don't want just blocks or paragraphs of text, which is really common to see in young designers websites. Now beyond that, we've got even more visualizations that feel very physical very 3D. So really this website is an excellent example of how to make concrete, how to make simple, how to make physical, really abstract and digital ideas, which are really common, especially with startups, the advent of AI these days, and all of these digital tools popping up left and right. And for website number four, we've got a physical product called Hot Honey, which is honey with a punch. The one thing I want you to notice about this website is that there's very little text. There's just this one paragraph right here. And then besides the testimonials, there's no other paragraph. There's just sentences here with icons, great type hierarchy, great color. And then you've got these testimonials. Of course, you're going to want to keep them as close to the original text as possible. So that's completely fine. And then that's it. If you want to add it to your cart, you can just click grab a bottle and then you can increase the number of bottles and it shows it visually here. And you can click load the truck and it takes you to a checkout page. Now we've all bought products online. So this is really unusual, really special and makes the product more memorable. I'd say this is an excellent reference website for thinking outside of the box, looking at what everyone else is doing in the space and then deciding to do something different while keeping all the most necessary elements there for sales, which is going to be the product photo, the price, the benefits of the product and reviews. And finally, number five is an agency website, just a beefed up portfolio site for analog agency. Now their whole messaging is built around this idea that we create the world your product lives in. So we've got this exploding light that represents that idea. Like we're creating kind of like the big bang, kind of like the very beginning of an idea. And so if you scroll down, you've got really huge immersive graphics here. If you click on one of the case studies, it's taking up your entire screen, it's animated, it's large, it's immersing you in that world. So you get that feeling that they did indeed create a world that this brand lives in. And you feel like you're part of this world because your scroll actually advances the animations, shows more graphics on the screen, and it just uses the layout, the way that you present the work to drive home this idea that we're creating a world that your product lives in. Now, another really interesting thing that Analog's website does really well is you can click on about up here and it actually expands this menu. So it's an interesting take on a drop down menu. But if you click on process and pricing, they're very, very transparent about what it looks like to work with them. So we've got five key types of projects and then we've got prices for each of these in the top right. And then we've got timelines for phases with the project time at the very bottom. And it just updates based on which project you select. Now, typically this is going to be the most common question that you'll get, especially the bigger the project, the client's going to ask a lot of questions about what should I expect from the process? How long is it going to take? What's my investment and all of that before they can get that approved and then move forward with the project. Analog is anticipating that all upfront, thereby qualifying leads in advance with the price and the timeline, and also being very clear about their process and what to expect. Honestly, I haven't seen anything like this from an agency website before, and it works pretty well responsively also. Overall, really interesting ways to use design on this website to solve really practical problems that the business faces. Now, all these websites are linked in the description, so you can go browse them yourself. And all these websites are built in Framer, who is the sponsor of today's video. I use Framer for all my client web design projects. I use it for my personal website. It's a game changer for me. I highly encourage you to check it out. But overall, you can see a theme throughout all of these websites that I've shown you. Yes, the visuals are amazing, but the most important thing is how is this communicating what I really want to get across to my client so that I can get more sales, I can get more clients, I can get more proposals signed, whatever it might be. All of these websites have thought about that very thoroughly, thought about how to make themselves unique, and have executed that and solved that problem with design. The better you can grasp the strategy behind your design decisions, the better you can communicate that with your clients, and the more success you will have in your web design projects when working with clients as well. So I hope all that made sense. I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you want more of these types of videos, share some websites with me that inspire you. And I'd be glad to make 
more of these and think through what are the actual learnings that we can get from these websites. So thank you for watching. Peace.